What up everyone, welcome back to the channel, Jamal here. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how I use Selenium with the help of Test NG inside of Eclipse so I can build a simple automation script so I can test this Flutter web app that we just talked about in the previous video. So let's hop into it. All right guys, so welcome back. So in my previous video, we talked about how we can enable the semantics inside of Flutter web so we can get access to the web elements. So what I mean by that is if I click my inspect button inside of Google Chrome, and if I click this pointer, we can see that now we can interact with these web elements. Before there was like a big canvas kit that was over this Flutter web view or this Flutter web app. So we could not render these elements individually. But now, we, since we enabled the semantics feature, we can now see these elements, which is great. So with this setup, now I can automate this web page using Selenium or any test framework that I love. So in today's video, I'm just going to walk you through that process on how I built a simple automation script to test this very same page. All right, so let me take a look at my script. So if I go over back to my Eclipse, you can see I have a Flutter Web Selenium project. So this was just built using Maven. As you can tell, I have my poem.xml file. And there's not much stuff happening in here. It's very, very simple. So I'm using Java 17 to compile my project, as well as just using the Selenium Java and the TestNG dependencies. I also have the Hamcrest and the Commons.io, but these are just some helper dependencies. All right. So if I go back into my project, let's take a look inside of this folder. You can see I have a package. It's called com kicksapp.test. So if I open up this project, I have a test class in here. And this is where I build my test script to test that Flutter web page that we just saw. All right, so this is a very, very simple script. If you're familiar with Selenium, you know how this process goes. We have a before class. So what this is going to do is pretty much set up my web driver, which is my Chrome driver, as well as give my timeout. So if my script cannot find an element within 20 seconds, the script is going to crash, as well as maximizing the window. So once the script launch, this window is going to be open up in full screen, So which is really, really good. All right, so we navigate to the test. So right here, I have a test annotation. So this is going to tell the script, hey, we want to run this function right here. And this function is called add and shoot to the card test. All right, so before I dive into the script, let me give you an overview back on the Flutter website so I can show you what this test case is actually going to do. So I'm going to navigate back to the web app. What I'm going to show you is my use case. So what I'm going to do is hover over products. So if I take a look into my inspect element, we have all of these attributes that are now available. So we have the Flutter Semantics ID, but this has like a Node 7 towards the end. So this is always going to change, not very reliable. We have a tab index of zero. We have multiple tab index of zero. So that's not gonna really work for us. But we do have this area label that has the value of product. So this is an attribute that we want to use. And that is the attribute I actually use in my script. So now that we have our element that we identified, this is going to be the process for identifying all the elements as I go through the script. So in this test case, what we're going to do is simply click products. Once we are here, we want to click the most popular filter. And what this is going to do is just organize the, the sneakers by popularity. And in this case, I want to click the Adidas Converse. For all you sneaker heads out here, this is not an Adidas Converse shoe. This is a Yeezy Boost, but the template that I purchased to do some of this testing so I can show you how to implement certain strategies, this is what they gave me. So I'm just gonna work with it for right now. This is just simply a demo page, okay? So now that we have the Adidas Converse, I want to click on that option. And once I get here, I want to scroll down and select a size. In this case, I'm going to be choosing a size 10. And once that's selected, we're gonna wait for the lazy load button for the add to cart to display. So here it is. I'm going to click the add to cart. And once that happens, we should have a shopping icon with one available. And that's our test case. We want to validate that this one is available for the shopping cart since we just added an item to the cart. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. So if I hop back into my script, 
I will gonna walk you through that whole process and what I did. So again, we used the Flutter semantics. We add the attribute for products and we then clicked it. Next, what we did was select the most popular filter. So if you're familiar with Selenium, you know how this goes. We have the driver dot find element. In this case, we are using by the CSS selector because this is more feasible for us in other apps. You can use ID, you can use XPath, but in Flutter web view, this is definitely more appropriate, okay? So once we got our most popular filter, what we wanna do is scroll down and look for our Adidas Converse shoes, quote unquote, we all know that it's a Yeezy Boost shoe. Um, we're gonna be using the CSS selector. So what we're gonna do for this CSS selector is pretty much use the contains logic. So what you see, we have an asterisk equal. So if I go back into this project and I scroll, let's say for that Adidas shoe, here we go. And if you want to inspect it, we can see what this value shows. So it's an Adidas Converse walking shoes with the $210. But I don't need all that information. I just want to find the Adidas Converse, which is gonna be easier and faster for me to just find this element, okay? So what I did to make sure that this was a one-on-one -on -one is to make sure do the find instead of inspect to make sure that when you pass that CSS selector variable, that it is a one-to-one -one and you don't have other elements using that as well. So let me show you what that means. So if I go back into my Eclipse, what I'm gonna do is just copy this Arial label right here. And let's go back into our Flutter web and inside the inspect towards the bottom and the find area, I'm just going to paste that. And I'm just gonna get rid of these back slashes and now click enter and there we go we can see that this selector is re readily available so we could identify this element and it only has one of one so that is very very important when you're using the contains clause okay so let's hop back over so once we find our adidas converse we're going to click that we're going to wait for five seconds it's going to just give the page some time to load um, there's other methods and better methods to ensure that once the web page is loaded, you know, we don't have to give it a defined time. It will be dynamically available. So if you could, if they found the element in three seconds, it will show in three seconds. So I just added a simple thread dot sleep and wait five seconds, okay? In the script, what we have is scroll the sizes into view. So pretty much what I did is just look for the select size text, scroll that into view so we can see the sizes that are available. Because if I go back into the application and I click this, sometimes the script will not be able to get all the way down here or the add to cart because it's pretty much kind of hidden. So sometimes I like to find something that is static like select size, scroll it into view, which is going to make the position more center. And this is going to allow us to see all the elements that we need to interact with. So that's a nice little cool trick. So let's go back into the project. So once we identify the element, we're going to scroll that into view, which is good. We're going to select the size 10, wait two seconds, add it to the cart. And then once everything is good, we want to just use this assertion right here to check that, hey, one item is currently in the cart. And if that looks good, we get a pass. All right, so I'm just going to go over to my class. I'm just going to right click do run as and then run as a test ng test, okay? So let me just click that. And let's watch our script kick off. All right, that was it. Script is now complete. So let's hop back over to Eclipse and see what we have. So we have a pass, add and shoot to the cart test. One pass, zero failures, zero skips. This look good. So inside our default suite is where our test results should be located. So let's see if it did that as expected. So you go to the root of your Flutter project and what you wanna do is just simply refresh. And now in our test output, we should have the default suite. So if I open that up, we have the default test. And I'm just going to say, show and system explorer and then double click and here we are so this is just a quick test result for that test case that just ran 
it ran in 16 seconds. We have the test method, no exceptions, how long it took in that instance. And that's it. That's how you can run your Selenium TestNG simple automation framework against a Flutter web app. If you guys found this video helpful, definitely hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. I also have a Patreon channel where I have exclusive content, so be sure to check that out. Until then, I'll see you guys in another video. Peace out.